Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Things We Know. I'm Lisa Callahan. And I'm Carrie Morin. And even though this is episode 10 of season two, this is officially our one-year anniversary of The Things We Know podcast. Congratulations. Wow, congrats. This is awesome. Yeah, pretty fun. Happy anniversary. Thank you. You too. <laughs> um, and so consequently, uh, we made a very conscious decision that we wanted to kick off March with International Women's Month. Um, and it's sort of global focus on equality and celebration um, by acknowledging once again, the whole reason we decided to do this pod to begin with, which is to let women what we now know, women of all ages, to understand that they're not alone in what they're going through, that we see them and that we understand, you know, the struggles, the heartbreak, the celebration, the excitement that it is to be a woman. Um, so you're not alone. And no matter what age you are, the best is still ahead of you. Oh, that's awesome. It's, this is all coming together so perfectly. Um, I love As if we planned it. it. Right. I mean, we're coming, it's this whole month is International Women's Month and there's International Women's Day coming up on the 8th of March. And, um, and that has always historically been a celebration and a collaboration for women for equality. And I think that, you know, we're going to get into this. I think that it has really highlighted and, and elevated, you know, some just unifying issues for women everywhere of all walks, but also, you know, we haven't always gotten it right. And I think that, that it, that it's an evolution the way yeah. international women, the emphasis on, on women, um, and their contributions and why they need to be celebrated and, um, highlighted, you know, I think it continues to improve. Um, and, and I, so I love this episode and I love this whole month that we are bringing in, we'll have more guests than usual this month because we are really celebrating and elevating the work of women that we really admire. Yeah, no question. And I love each one of our guests. Um, and then for those of you, well, you can't even see if you're on on YouTube necessarily, but Carrie and I are both wearing sweatshirts. Mine says the female gaze petrify the patriarchy and it's Medusa who I love. And you've got your RBG. Does that mean? Yes, yeah. right. What else? <laughs> We exactly. Should, if, if we weren't recording in the morning, we could have our uh, RBG. Uh, That's true. Wine glasses with her wearing a crown. But. Yeah, I did choose today not to be uh, drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's a little early in the morning for that. Um, okay, so let's start talking about International Women's Month and specifically International Women's Day, which, as you said, is March 8th. I always loved that it was March 8th because that was my mother in law law's birthday or is my brother-in-law's birthday she passed last year um and I just with a day the time I realized that I thought wow that is, tracks so much for me because Delilah Darren's mom you know she was widowed at an early age with two boys um and she went on to travel the world working for NCR like she in her own little individual way absolutely blazed a a path um, that was unusual for a woman in in the 80s, even, you know, and mm -hmm. it was always so impressive to me um, what she was able to hold and handle and raise, really, truly raise two amazing men. Uh, Clay okay. and Darren are both just, they're just amazing. They're the kind of men you and I want to raise and are, right. are raising ourselves, you know, but she did it by herself with her husband passing. Um, he had been sick for a very long time. So, I mean, she probably started holding that much earlier than when he died, you know? Um, and so I just always loved that it was on her birthday. Little side I love note. That. Well, I mean, I, Darren's, um, I didn't know her obviously. And, but your, your stories about her and Darren's beautiful obituary that he wrote. What's yeah. It, obituary or eulogy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's, she's definitely, um, and, and that's the thing about so many women and, and so many people's ancestral line is there's some great stories there. And this is why I love, there's some emphasis on bringing those stories forward. Cause I don't think they get highlighted in history and nobody really knows about these single moms who are total heroes who, you know, who created so much possibility and, you know, opportunity for their children. Yeah. And for the yeah. next women to come. Um, my niece, 
my niece Sophia. It's her birthday, March 8th. And oh, that's cool. My dad always used to say she's like a CEO. I mean, just from the day she was born, she just kind of owned the room in a and in the most lovely way. She's a nurse. Mm. She's very um she's got a just a huge heart and a huge, like strong, you know, brilliant personality. And so I love that that's her birthday too. That's awesome. Yeah. So why don't we jump into the sort of 10 values that really guided International Women's Day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And these come from their official website because, mm. you know, uh, Lisa and I could talk about this from every angle, but we figured we really want to kick this off with these with these principles that, you know, went into forming this important, this important month. So, yeah. yeah. You want to start? Sure. Um, one of my favorites, which is justice. So exploring the concept of justice as a call for equal rights and opportunities for women globally. Um, I'm some of you may know this, but you know, it was 1972 before women could have their own line of credit without their husband's signature. You know, it's I think growing up, even you and I, right? We were born in 69, so we don't know a time in our in our knowledge of that not being true but it is not that long ago you know Roe v Wade happened in 73 being able to have a credit card in your name in 72 you know for anybody who is our age or younger this is still very new and very tenuous and it's still very tied and again we're going to get into this a little bit later like to white women, <laughs> you know, and yeah. there's so much globally that still needs so much work. Mm. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I just, <laughs> that justice hits me hard because there uh -huh. we could have, we could have like a whole podcast. We could have a, a whole an entire year. podcast and there are some great ones out there. Um, I mean, like from their website, it says like justice means being afforded the same equal rights and opportunities as men. That's so simple. And, and our girls today would go, duh, but still it is still, you know, it's, it's not true everywhere. And in, even in this country where it's on paper, true, it's not happening. Right. Authentically. Um, and so just the call for justice, it, it prevails as women seek equal treatment and conditions and opportunities and like, you know, all the way down to local courtrooms and, um, and employers. So it's just, it's a big deal. Um, justice is a big deal. And I don't think I'll ever stop, you know, not, not only wanting to fight for it, but wanting my boys to fight for it too. Absolutely. And I will say this at the outset, this isn't just about humans that were born as women. This is about anyone who identifies as a woman woman and justice for trans women is even worse at this point you know so this is yes have we come a long way baby sure and we have so much farther to go yeah man um <laughs> well that brings us to dignity right um yes. so there like in england i think think it was a leading organization that was campaigning campaigning sorry for women's um suffrage um it existed i want to say in the early 1900s they um they created like or they adopted the color purple as a symbol of dignity so dignity as a value refers to the idea that all people have the right to be valued respected and receive ethical treatment which goes into what you just said like all women, all, all people identifying as women. The word is derived from Latin dignitas and it means worthiness, right? Like mm. dignity means worthiness. So dignity means I'm worthy of justice. I'm worthy of equal treatment. I'm worthy of, of being celebrated. So um, I love that it's the second one right after justice because there's really no justice without dignity. Yeah. And quite frankly, we're worthy because we were born. Right. <laughs> it's just because really you is. exist you <laughs> are yeah. you are worthy we, um, um, this is this is this just side note lisa and i this is like the water we swim in the air we breathe but it is so amazing how brilliant educated people sometimes really don't understand the difference between confidence and self-esteem right mm. and especially women because um you know confidence sometimes you're, you're not nurtured to show that because that could be cocky. Right. Mm -hmm. And like women get some backlash from that when they show confidence 
And then that will sometimes erode self-esteem, but sometimes it has nothing to do with each other. Like confidence you get from doing something. You might be really confident what you do, but you might not feel like a worthy human, right? Yeah. And that's often amazing. We, we're working with successful people who are doing something really well and we get at, but like, how are you lovable just because you exist? Like, who are you right. when you're doing nothing? And that is where so much of our work ends up being. So I, I do love that. I yeah, do. no, thank you. That's a, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the third value guiding International Women's Day is hope. Mm -hmm. um, and really looking at the suffragettes campaign for, you know, not just the vote, but for a better world. And for them, they use the color green to symbolize hope, which I love. Green's one of my favorite colors, as is purple. <laughs> <laughs> I do love, I do love green. It's a good one. Um, and I, even I, with all of our, everything that we are, that again, we have so much farther to go. And what are we without hope? You know, we could, um, fall down a rabbit hole of, especially in this election year, of worrying and and thinking, ah, what if, you know? Um, I, for one, am absolutely refusing to go there. I feel very confident in my belief system that everything will be fine come the day after the election. Uh, but again, if you'd have if you don't have hope, what do you what do you have? So it's, I think it's imperative, especially if you're out there doing the work, um, to always come from a hopeful space. Does that mean I want, you, we've talked about this a million times, this isn't about, you know, bypassing your feelings, you're going to have days where you're beat down. Um, but if you can always re-access a sense of hope, it's just, I think it's everything. Yeah. Mm. For sure. <laughs> Hope is, is that um, optimism and what, what I feel like our, our like secret weapon as coaches for hope is what we call future pacing, right? Like yeah. if you, if you're having trouble accessing hope, let's just go into what you want and mm. see what you find there. <laughs> and, um, and sometimes that gives you hope or the belief that you could get there. Right. Um, yeah. Hope is Hope is a delicate thing. We could have a whole episode on that. Uh oh. Hope is a is a driving force. I think. Yeah, for sure. And you're right. It is delicate. Yeah. And the yeah. lack of it, it's really debilitating. Yes. No question. No question. So the next one's equality, which probably you know on the surface is like, well, that's the same as justice, and and yes and no, right? Because equality means ensuring all people have equal opportunities to make the most of their lives and talents, and that nobody has poorer life chances due to background or status, right? And that's like the core right. of of you know a lot of um, social justice movements, but definitely International Women's Day. Um, but it, it gender equality refers to women receiving and accessing the same opportunities and benefits as men, not just rights, right? So in politics, women used to not be able to hold positions. Uh, they used to not be able to vote, obviously, you know, um, there, so equality means, you know, not only are women assumed to be the ones at home rearing children, but like that men would be too. <laughs> and, yeah. and that, um, that like, there's no, there's no opportunity or employment that, can't include or, or be extended to women um, and, you know, and people of color, really, because that it's still just such a huge, huge skewed, you know, imbalance there. So equality really goes into the opportunities, not just the rights. Yeah, uh, no, I think that's amazing. And then once a woman gets into uh, uh, into the room where it happens, you know, not ha being appropriated. Um, which is when, you know, a woman <laughs> has a story, has an I've idea. Never, I've never heard that. That's oh, really yeah. I, I got that out of, um, oh, my gosh, I don't have it in front of me, but Jennifer Palmieri's um, book. And, oh, it's so good. But she, that's the first time I'd heard about it. So appropriating is when a woman, and I, I bet you all can relate to this, has an idea and it gets poo-pooed. And then a couple minutes later, the man says the exact same idea. And this happens a lot in boardrooms and where, again, women, it looks like they've got equality. They're in, they're in the room where it happens, but the man comes in and says it 
And all of a sudden it's like, oh, what a great idea. Bravo, bravo. And the woman's like, but I just said that. So, you know, it's it's not just about getting into the room, but to also be able to say your piece and have it be heard, you know, and that's, um, so again, it's like we've, we've made these, these little strides and yet there's still equality is, is just, it's not there yet. No, no. And, and we can't yeah. rest on our laurels. Yeah. And there's, a, yeah, we, we go back to our um, episode with Charlotte on, yeah. on how many ways we still have not arrived where we, we where we're fighting to get. <laughs> Yeah, no question. Um, so the next one's a fun one, collaboration. Love I love collaboration, obviously, as you and I have been collaborating for the last year um, and then some. Uh, but this really highlights the importance of unity and collaboration as a driving force for change. And I think, you know, this is something, you know, there's there's the, the cliche, there's no I in team, but it's so true. You know, you can get farther faster when you're working together. And for women, you know, we're so often pitted against each other um, and and society, the patriarchy, whatever you want to call it, wants us to be knocking each other down and pulling each other off the ladder instead of lifting each other up and pulling each other up along the way. And we are just so much better off when we're working together. And again, to go back to your point, and this isn't just about women helping women, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there are really great men in those room where it rooms where it happens and they need to be supporting us, keeping other men from appropriating, you know, and lifting us up and holding us as equal as well. And, and so it's really important. We were just talking about this before we started recording. Like I was happened to be at a, we're recording this a couple of weeks ago. So I happened to be at a Super Bowl party yesterday and I came home and it was equal men and women. Um, I don't know jack shit about football, but I like a good party. Uh, so that's where I went. <laughs> and, and I was just thinking there wasn't a, there were definitely men and women in that room that understood football better than me. Um, and nobody was like, eye rolling or mansplaining you know, they, no mansplaining. mansplaining yeah it, if I was if I asked a question they explained it without any you know and I just came home and thought I am so pleased and fortunate that I have surrounded myself with really really good men in my life and and with women who have really good men in their life um so it does going back to the hope piece it does give me hope um that you know, this is possible. Will it be possible in our lifetime? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. No, <laughs> I just turned 55. Woo! I, I got a lot more years to see. This oh, yeah. Time, right. Um, well, that that brings me to like, will it happen? Tenacity is the next mm. one. Yep. Right. Because it, it's the key principle, really, because it's a tireless effort fighting the good fight that changes history. Right. And that changed history. Um. I I want to take this direct quote from the website, which is International Women's Day is the major day for rallying action, driving visibility and applauding women who make a difference through their achievements. Mm. Obviously, we should be doing that every fucking day. <laughs> right. We shouldn't have right. a day. Right. We should have it should just be a thing. And there's a lot of amazing organizations and groups. And, you know, I imagine this being a whole month, you know, because we're not there yet. We're recording this earlier. We're going to we're going to, you know, highlight that because I, sure. I think we want people to really understand who who are the most tenacious role models here for us, for us and, and the daughters that, you know, and the granddaughters to come. So I think that we don't get anywhere with um, without deeds instead of just words. Absolutely. Yes. You know, and, and again, and I, in, in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking around this being an election year and a very important election year. Um, we've already lost so much with, you know, the repeal of Roe and um, one could argue, well, what's another rally, you know, what's another postcard you know what's another i i'm not a big i don't phone bank i'm gonna be straight up but i will write letters till my fingers fall off and postcards and i'll go to every rally um because again it's that idea of not being alone you know and so any bit you can do in this year 
to make sure that we don't walk even farther backwards um, in in history is is so incredibly important. And if for some reason you're listening to this pod in the future, <laughs> no, this is no, but March of, of 2024. <laughs> right. Yeah, in the future. But but anytime, because yeah. chances are there's an election coming up near you where you can really, you know, be be conscientious about what's happening for women. So, yeah. So the next one is appreciation. And it sort of goes to what you were saying, you know, making sure that we understand that International Women's Day is a designated moment to celebrate and appreciate the achievements of women. And, but it it's kind of on us to go do that research on days that it's not being promoted, you know, on, on the months that are not March. Because, you know, there's a lot out there that we don't know. Um, oh, I just remember the name of the book. It's called She Proclaims. And there was a lot in there or in yeah. She Proclaims. I remember Je- again, when you read that. Yeah. yeah. Again, by Jennifer Palmieri, who was Hillary Clinton's campaign, um, had headed up her campaign. She was a communication person for Obama. Um, she's a who, uh, really neat woman. And, you know, there was a lot even in that book that I didn't know, even around the suffragettes, you know, I mean, to be honest, I didn't even know the word suffragette until suffragette city from Bowie. What? Right. Um, <laughs> but, in, or and Mary Poppins, I guess, because, you know, the mom and Mary Poppins was a suffragette, but, um, you know, it, it is, Unfortunately, it is on us. The onus is on us to do the research to find out what women have accomplished because there's a lot out there um, and and very specifically women of color. I mean, I the movie, of course, that comes to mind is Hidden Figures, you know, yes. who nobody knew that, you know, right. I mean, they were Im- imperative. They were so necessary and, and were the thing that made, you know, the moon landing not be a shit show. Oh, and it, and in, in almost every point of history, you're going to find that, like, yeah. and, and the people of color that were kind of overshadowed. Um, this is a great moment. I'm just realizing to shout out Sarah Gorski, our web designer, your web designer and ours, but um, ours, yeah. she, uh, tell, tell about her. Like, she has this really cool. Um, oh, yeah. FC she that, And you were a guest on it. Yeah. I was a guest on it. Yeah. So Sarah Gorski, who, again, she is our amazing web designer. She's a fantastic actress. Uh, Darren and I have known her since Chicago, but she lives here in LA now. Lucky us. Um, she has an, a, a podcast called called Broads You Should Know, uh, which is very fun. And it does. It goes into all of these, you know, behind the scenes people, names you might know, but stories about them you didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes she has interviews, some, uh, it was fun. What she does when she has interviews, which is really cool, is it's a two-parter. So like for me, I brought uh, Jean Knighted, she was the founder of Weight Watchers. I did my piece on her and then she turns around and inter- and then does a piece, a second part. Um, and she talked about the first woman to run the Boston Marathon and everything she went through to be able to go through that. Um, it's a really fun two-parter. I will we'll put a link in the um, in the pod, yeah, okay, you know, so we okay. can hear. It. But yeah, broads, you should know. I mean, Sarah does. She really finds people you have never heard of, and and their impact. And it's not just you know, it's not just here. It's their impact in history all over the world, women of all colors, uh, really amazing, amazing podcast. I dig it. That's so cool. I love it. Next one. Oh, yes, the ECT. <laughs> <laughs> um, equality can only be achieved if the diversity differences and qualities of women are truly valued, right? So respect for others is that is that key value that's going to underpin the ethos and agenda of an International Women's Month or Day. Um, and you know, just the respect for self, yeah. right. Not just respect for, um, women, but respect for self. And, yeah. you know, I don't care, you know, who you are, you can't re- like whether you're male, female or alien, you can't respect women unless you respect yourself. So, yeah. you know, shout out to all the mothers who are raising self-respecting and self-aware men and women, because that's where it's all gonna <laughs> where all the change is going to happen well and i think and and maybe you're like shut it about the election but i that's another thing that i think is really fascinating about 
you know, when you look at how many women voted against their own best interest in both 2016 and 2020, and that was always so very confusing to me. And I do think it comes down to, and I'm generalizing, but my understanding and the the books I've read and the sort of deeper dives that I've gone in, it feels to me, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't be de declarative. It feels to me like it does come from a place of a lack of self-respect or a lack of self-esteem because they are, ten they're, they're, I mean, they're voting against their own best self-interest. That's all I can say about it. You know, I, I don't care what your belief system is around, you know, uh, whether you are anti-abortion or pro-choice. That's on you. I, I'm pro-choice. So I believe you have the choice to believe whatever you want. Just don't tell me what to do or my daughter what to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that sense of like having to control women, because I'm here to tell you, if you think being pro-life is about the child, you you are sadly mistaken. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's it does come from that sense of wanting to control women. And where is the respect there? Mm, yeah, I have a lot. Well, snaps to all that. <laughs> snaps to all that. Like, if we could be in that place of respecting our differences, mm -hmm. and in conversations and I always liked I think it was Brittany Brown who said we don't need you know bigger fences or gates we need um, a longer table yeah we sit down that. and understand understand where everyone's coming from um it really starts with respect yeah and then it leads into the next one right <laughs> the next one is empathy yeah. which is again understanding and and feeling feeling the challenges faced by women globally just because you are not going through it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, doesn't mean it isn't true. And so being able to step outside of your own experience and look at the world in a from a 30,000 foot view um, and acknowledging that what is happening is true, even if you, God is willing, never have to face those same challenges. Mm. Yeah, I, I wrote this down because I loved this statement more than anything else I found there, which was International Women's Day calls for global understandings about the plight of women, the challenges faced, the obstacles endured, and the changes desired for an inclusive and progressive world. That kind of goes with the empathy. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. the, please take, <laughs> don't just take a day or even a month, but like, please let this be, you know, part of your evolution that you start yeah. to really recognize that about others who have different background different experience different gender yeah. yeah which might could literally I, and i i say this truly from a place of of openness if you have always lived in an area where everyone looks like you you know it it could be hard and confronting and that's okay this work isn't easy you know i feel very lucky that i have spent 27 years um, between Chicago and LA living in very diverse neighborhoods. And, and, and I don't, we all have prejudice. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure I have it. There, I'm no question, but I don't look at any particular other person and other them when, when, when possible, you know what I mean? Like, I know I'm, I'm nobody is perfect at this, but um, it, it might be confronting to you to try to think outside of your box. If, if you've always just lived around people that look like you. Right. And I don't know why this is coming up for me, but we saw this in the last election that like, you know, there's, there's some people would be like, well, this always worked for my parents, for my mom to take a more subservient role. And, you know, so men and women. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for those of you. I just did a little. Finger roll. Middle finger. Yeah. Um, the, but imagine what it would feel like for your mother, your wife, your daughter, your sister, if they, you know, if they were not respected and they weren't heard for them, you know, like what if that didn't work for them? Right. So right. like have some empathy and don't expect everyone to do it the way you or your mother. Absolutely. Yeah. The last one's interesting. Oh, sorry. Wait. No, no, no. I was going to say, and the last one is, Ooh, it is forgiveness, interesting. right? <laughs> like, it's so interesting that, like, obviously, to this day, women suffer harsh and inhumane treatment 
through ongoing discrimination in the workplace and, and, and like in the homes and in, in some by laws in certain countries. Right. Um, oh yeah. So it's really hard to forgive that when we, we think we know better. Right. But it really is like focusing attention and effort on the way forward. It's almost, you know, like that um, we have great examples, mostly from other countries of amnesty, right. Yeah. To say this, this was not okay. And we're moving forward versus um, it's okay. <laughs> or, or staying angry about it and fighting the fight and not moving forward. Like, how do we, that, that's a, that's hard. It's hard, you know, and, and is it possible? And I think, yes, to celebrate and highlight and move forward and acknowledge that like this was unjust and, and that there were, there are, you know, so many wonderful examples of how to do it better. And I, you know, forgiveness does it, it I don't think forgiveness means forget, right? Mm-hmm. Forgiveness. And I think you just kind of hit the nail on the head when you come at a um, issue with anger, is that the most productive way? Or is it, is there some sense, are you, are we more productive when we acknowledge something's a shit show, right? When we acknowledge this is, this has been going on a long time. We have fallen down time and time again. Um, We forgive ourselves for that part part in it. We forgive the, um, what do I say? The, the oppressors, Mm -hmm. but it's not like we're forgetting. Right. We're not blowing it off and saying, oh, well, that that was then this is now. No, we have to keep that in. I mean, it's a reason International Women's Day and International Women's Month is so important. So we are aware that it was only 73 that Roe became a law, that it was only 72. You know, all the things that have happened within the last 55 years, you know, as you and I are both double nickels this year. Um it, we can't forget. Is that, is that, that looks like, five five. Five. Oh, five. <laughs> um, you know, we can't forget, we can't forget. And forgiveness doesn't mean forgiving, forgetting. It means you there, you can come from that place of hope because mm-hmm. when you're angry or, you know, steadfast in a way that is not, that is conjures up a lot of, um, con, con, uh, what do I want to say? constriction right that's what I think of when I think of anger around this stuff like am I angry that Roe is not codified anymore a hundred percent but if I just came from this place of anger all the time oh god it would eat me up yeah and then forgiveness is for you forgiveness is for the internal right it's for your well-being and it makes it you able to forge on to be tenacious all the things we've taught, empathetic, all the things we've just said. Like, I think forgiveness is the touchstone to all of that. I think it's it's also just a really beautiful female trait that not, not that men don't have it. I think they have just, you know, um, I don't know, just hormonally, you know, egos that make sometimes harder, not all men, obviously, I've just seen it more often than harder to get to that place of, of, acceptance and then moving forward right and yeah what I, I think of this day this month as being about awareness empowerment and action and you don't get to those without allowing yourself some grief and anger yeah it's you know so that 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 those come before forgiveness and you have every right to stay in those as long as you need to and go back yep. to them yeah. yeah yeah for sure I love it. Those are great. So justice, dignity, hope, equality, collaboration, tenacity, appreciation, respect, empathy, and forgiveness are the 10 values guiding International Women's Day. Yeah. I am. What do you do? You do you do? I know that like you guys always participate in March. Of, like, do you and Charlotte do you get involved in anything this month in particular or? Yeah. I mean, more closer to the election or. Oh, I am certain there'll be things closer to the election. I mean, I'm already trying to figure out, you know, uh, get all my, all the ways I can without phone calling. (laughs) That's just the one thing I don't like to do. But I mean, you know, in 2020, man, I was 
typing my fingers off in text chains, um, which was really fascinating. Um, you know, I do a lot of postcard writing, as do you. you. These are all things you do as well. Do a lot of postcard writing, do a lot of letter writing. Um, which I really love. But when you put yourself on the line, which is why I don't like to do the phone calling, even via text. I mean, I remember in 2020, like I, I would do an hour at a time and some people were lovely, um, but there was a lot of vitriol pushed back at me, even over text. And I remember like our, there was a script, but there were, a, there was a point where you could say, you know, I'm not a bot. I'm actually human texting this back. It, and it often, it didn't matter. Um, so I will be, I'm certain I will be doing all of that. This will be Charlotte's first year to vote. That's right. I know. Miles, I'm so Miles excited. too. Miles too. Yeah. She won't get to vote in the primary because, well, one, the primary happens because in California, you can sign up before you're 18, but you can't vote in the primary if you haven't turned 18. Some states allow you to vote in the primary if you're going to be 18 by election day, but California does not. So yes, it was funny. I've actually got the link for her to sign up and I could go do it. I'm sure it's just putting in her name and that, but I actually want her to physically go in and, and register to vote. I want her to have that entire experience. She went with us in 2020. It was Liam and Irina's first year to vote. So we all went, uh, the five of us to vote um, in that election. She went with me. I will say she did actually do the punch for Hillary in, in 2016. That's I let awesome. her do that. But um, yeah, That's so awesome. she's gone with me to, I mean, many, many election days. But this will be our first official one. So watch out, world. Oh, I love that. I just pulled this up while you were talking because I was like, oh, right now I'm thinking if you're listening and you're like, well, what could I do? Yeah. And there's this great site. I didn't even know it existed. Your dream, live your dream dot org. Your dream blog. It says 15 ways to celebrate Women's History Month. I think we'll link this because it's so it's so great. Explore the history of women's rights. Obviously, we, we just kind of were highlighting some of it. Um be number two be aware of issues women still face today yep right this goes right um download the feminist activist toolkit i'm definitely going to do that apparently only 30 percent of people consider themselves feminists i remember my dad used to say i'm a feminist i think women should be pilots not you know like he did like he just was like they should go as far as men go in in all these careers and and still we'd have like ways we would debate with them what's really going on there but still like you know only 30% of people well, consider themselves feminists? I just feminists? think feminism, I, I do think that's it's shifting. I'd be curious when that was written versus like, I do feel, again, to talk about, go back to Barbie, I feel like Barbie shifted that a, some. Yes. Um, I think that feminism doesn't have, in, in the, what I want to say, the liberal progressive mindset doesn't have quite the stigma that it did. But, you know, I was really yeah. amazed by how many like liberal or progressive women didn't want to take that on True. because I think it got, it, it got sullied um, to think that feminism equaled man hating. Yeah. Or angry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And angry. Right. And it doesn't, I mean, again, men can be feminists. Feminism is so um, inclusive too, which. Totally. Is well, um, yes, yes. Um, okay. Another one post on social media to spread awareness of what women's history month. Good job, Lisa. Number five, support a woman's nonprofit, like a charity mm -hmm. that works with women and girls in need. There's so many, um, host an event to celebrate women. Love that. Like, you know, either like watch movies directed by women with female leads, chill to some feminist shows on Netflix, um, listen to music by female artists, all kinds of stuff. Um, so, or, you know, read quotes by famous women, like yeah. Decorate your space with empowering quotes by women or art by women like Frida Kahlo or Georgia O'Keeffe. That's pretty cool. I'll Start throw a conversation about what sisterhood needs. Support women-owned businesses. Love that. Write a thank you note to a woman that inspires you. Mm. Write yourself a love note. Watch TED Talks for women. Support women authors and artists. We already said that. Participate in political advocacy. Mentor a girl or a fellow woman, join a women's volunteer club and discover your inner Shiro. I love this. Are you more of a Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a Malala or an Amy Poehler? Take our Shiro quiz. I'm gonna I want all of the above. I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. I want that quiz. Now, so I'll give a couple of shout outs as you uh, to go along with that. Um, one is a really fabulous uh, nonprofit called Girls Supporting Girls. Um, I, I know some women who work on it. 
uh, and they raise money to build um, schools overseas in specifically yeah. in Africa. So that's a really great charity. Um, and then when you were talking about, I was thinking about, and I know you've seen this on my coffee table, um, our guest from last month, Tressa Pope, gave me a book for, I think, Christmas. Uh, it's called The Only Woman. And it's a really cool picture book, small, of all these pictures of different experiences where a woman was the only, there was only one woman in the picture. So it's like uh, a class full of engineers and there's only one woman. So it's a really interesting book. Plus last year or the year before, um, Ms. Magazine celebrated their 50th anniversary. So that is something for sure. Ms. Magazine only comes out, I believe, once a month now. It is not... Unfortunately, the powerhouse it used to be, but they are still doing amazing work. Mm. So get a subscription to Ms. Magazine. Excellent. <laughs> I love it. Mm. So let's move into the fact that uh, feminism and women's rights and suffragettes uh, have not always included women of color. No, they haven't. So it's this is definitely a no better, do better situation. I, it's as awful as the whole, God, as horrific as the whole George Floyd, you know, and the wake of all that in 2020 and in the stuff that was happening, you know, later at the Capitol, everything that, that, that has all the ugliness that's been kind of stirred up to the surface. I think it's brought some really wonderful conversations around for women of color saying, Hey, you know, we haven't always felt included in, in feminism, you know, like yeah. a lot of the women's rights stuff doesn't feel like it's highlighting and including the experience of non-white women yeah and um i think those conversations need to continue to happen and we we could probably have an episode we should we, we will <laughs> yeah, it's like we will have that conversation because it's so important and we as white women are super aware of it especially in the coaching world yeah we, we see you know people in our world you know doing the bypass of all that and um it's it's been interesting to watch you know people who really really think they're coming from a good place be so blind to um, the disparity. Well, there. both are true, right? They are coming from a good place and they're blind. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I I would count myself in that pre-George Floyd. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a ginormous turning point for me in understanding how not to just not be racist, but to be anti-racist. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I did a lot and as, a, as did you of work around that for myself in mm -hmm. 2020. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, so it, I think you and I are a work in progress, at, mm -hmm. but I'm glad we're a work in progress and we're not just putting blinders on and being like, la, 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 you yeah. know? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, <laughs> we, I, I remember one of our mentors said, you know, yeah, in this world of coaching, there's a whole lot of white women up in here. <laughs> like we, and, and that's not even true. When you expand out and you zoom out, there is a ton of phenomenal and some some we're talking to this month actually but there's yep. there's a ton of phenomenal um women of color out there in the world of of uh, self-empowerment and coaching yeah. and therapy and and doing brilliant work and um and they're not just there to empower women of color they're there to empower everyone men included which yeah that's what i was just thinking i thought yeah just because they're of color doesn't mean that's all right. they should coach right like it should everybody should be inclusive but it it starts with us it, it in and understanding um what has been lacking since ever yeah <laughs> that's an important thing to include and i'm i'm glad and I, we will expand on that yeah especially throughout this month because yeah. we really have some powerhouse women to come in and celebrate international women's month with us and i'm yeah. so excited and so the interviews have just been phenomenal and you've got a lot to look forward to in this Great. upcoming month for sure. Awesome. Okay. Song. <laughs> I, I'm going to let you quote this. I mean, okay. it's, I knew the song and, but when you picked it out, I then went back and rewatched the video, which is just chef's kiss. Anyways, right. um, I assume you've seen the video. I have. It's so yeah. good. So also, good. um, I watched her tiny desk performance. Yes. She explains it. And that yes, I did too. I mean, was just incredible. So this is Taylor Swift, the, um, the performer of the moment. And, and especially because we're recording this the day after the Super Bowl, which, you know, so many jokingly associated with her. Um, yes. <laughs> and, and for good reason, because a lot of the hype 
like the silly hype that was out there this whole past football season around you know a lot of men not really liking the attention that was given her which she didn't ask for she was supporting someone she's dating um it, it just highlighted this very fact of something she's apparently in in her tiny desk thought about she said 700 million times a day right which is all of these things I'm getting criticized for, you know, for, for being successful, for being confident, for being unapologetic, for, for pointing out all the, the disparity in the ways women, you know, can be labeled, you know, in relationships and in work and in life and in fame, um, for pointing it out, right. Um, how she's looked at differently. And she wondered what would life be like if I was a man? So we are highlighting the song, the man, um, and it really hits home. So I love the very, it starts off. I, I could have quoted the entire song, but I like yeah. the way it starts off, which is I would be complex. I would be cool. They'd say I played the field before I found someone to commit to. And that would be okay for me to do. Every conquest I had would make me more of a boss to you. I'd be a fe fearless leader. I'd be an alpha type when everyone believes you. What's that like? Hmm. And then it goes into that chorus, which is, you know, I'm so sick of running as fast as I can. Um, wondering, what is it? I didn't even write that part. Wondering something if I was a man, right? Yeah. Wondering what, what would be true or something if I was a man. So clearly I am not a Swifty. Like, a, no, I am not either. Yeah. I, yeah. I cannot, I, I probably know 10 songs of hers. I probably can't name them. I can and only name I, one. <laughs> and I might not even be able to name, I might not even know 10. I game, you know, a lot of people around me, a lot of um, people love her. And so I've come to know her lyrics and I watched her tiny desk and I, I'm just so impressed with her songwriting ability and her honesty and the way she perseveres. I like the stand she took in the last election. I think that was really bold for someone from, you know, for a young woman from Tennessee of all places. Yeah. I think she's, she's really, you know, she has, she has bumped a lot of, you know, she's bumped heads with a lot of people and um, I admire that too. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I'm celebrating her, but also just like women artists who, who use that opportunity to educate and create awareness around the disparities. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and I, as you're talking, I'm thinking like, what are some of the other women that are amazing? I mean, clearly, you know, the queen Oprah, but you know, Beyonce and Anna DuVernay, just like all these women that they're uh, Greta Gerwig, Margot Robbie, you know, all these, all these women. SZA. That are, <laughs> yeah, SZA, SZA. yeah, we we're talking about that too. I fucking love SZA. Um, Dua Lipa, like all these women that I, I do think I, I've said this before, not necessarily on the pod, but just to other people, like of all the shit show that was the 2016 elections, I think the thing that is good is that women were like oh hell no and we have stepped up and and stepped in because this is that is not sustainable that that mindset of going backwards um and and i really love all women of all colors and creeds and orientations just kind of stepping up and 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 um really living International Women's Month on a daily basis. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's impressive, it's hopeful. Um, I and I do watch, and maybe I'm lucky because of who Charlotte has become friends with, but I just look at Charlotte and her friends. Um, and it just it does give me a lot of hope. You know, it doesn't mean that I stay like the Barbie quote. I'm not going to stand still to let them see how far they've come. I'm going to keep marching. But I just really love watching these girls own it mm. um, and not allowing any man to dictate to them anything. And and I love watching their male friends surround them with this love and bringing them up and holding them high and pulling them along um so that yeah. does give me a lot of hope for the future um can i have permission to do the next verse because i i just yes, please. Big, i looked it up to say like what was i remembering you know because i'm so sick of them coming at me again because if i was a man then i'd be the man that's what i couldn't remember but then it's they'd say i hustled put in the work 
they wouldn't shake their heads and question how much of this I deserve. Mm -hmm. What I was wearing, if I was rude, could all be separated from my good ideas and power moves. It reminds me of one of Glennon Doyle's early podcast uh, episodes of We Can Do Hard Things, talking about how to deal with criticism, right? And like how to like, she 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 um, made this analogy, I'm going to the mailbox to get all my mail, right? This was like, you know, getting email, but she put it this way. And I have to separate them into like multiple piles mm. because, you know, like there's the genuine feedback. There's the like criticizing what kind of like mother or partner I must be. There's the, do I even deserve this pile? There's the, like, there's just like some really petty stuff about how I look. Like you have to like literally separate it out. And she talks to all her male counterparts who are writers and authors and they don't, they maybe have two piles, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing about your character and about how you, you, no one would want to listen to you or be married to you or, you know, like that's so, that's so rare or, or non-existent. And that's what that reminds me of. It's like, why do we, why do we do that? Why do we tear apart women? Yeah. Anyway. Well, but I think, you know, it goes back to, again, I'll talk about She Proclaims. Like one of the things I thought was really interesting that got pointed out in She Proclaims was the idea of um, women being labeled as shrill or, um, you know, hard to listen to or whatever. And and she says in there, the timbre of our voices are literally different than men's voices. And so this whole idea of like, we sound shrill, it's just our voice. Like that we're not doing anything. But that never happens to a man, right? So I think um, it 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 that's why this song is is so perfect. Or if I, I what's uh, Beyonce is like if I if I was a boy, same theme, right? Mm -hmm. um, we just it it's going to happen, and it's kind of in, I'm going to say imperative that we just don't let it, you know, that we that we keep having these kind of conversations that Barbies come out, that these kinds of songs come out, that we celebrate not only white women saying it, but women of color saying it because it, we have, we just have to keep fighting against it. And there's where the tenacity comes in. We could throw up our hands and be like, well, this is just the way it's always been. Or we can, you know, pull our bootstraps up and keep marching. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, well said, well said. Because I have an issue every time someone says that I would vote for her. I just don't like the sound of her voice. Right. Yeah. Well, her, so. we have different voices. I mean, I know I have a very low voice, yeah. <laughs> but we have different. It just is literally biological. So you are complaining about something that biologically we have no choice in. Yeah. And that just goes back to how many ways can they make us small? And right. women do it to women. This is not just about men doing it to women. Women do it to women too. When I said that, I was thinking about women who have said that. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's yeah. That, that whole sisterhood vibe. And that's a good note to end on, right? Like what if, what if International Women's Month invites every person to look at like how they practice sisterhood? Yeah. How they support women, even if they don't necessarily agree with them um, or even, you know, are friends with them like how how can we support the advancement of women how can we support women in leadership and yeah women who are making opportunities for others yeah, yeah. amen sister <laughs> <laughs> well i love this i like yeah, this, this is fun yeah it feels just like the beginning of many conversations yeah and as we've both said we have amazing conversations coming up uh this month First, Noyland Mendoza, then Tressa Pope, and then I don't know how to say Sama's last name. So you say Balbaki. Sama Balbaki. It really, it's all three of these topics are so interesting and so different from each other um, and really, really valuable. And I'm certain that you will find some tidbit in every single one of them. So as you listen to them, as usual, Carrie and I would love for you to share them with your friends and your family. And it doesn't just have to be women, share them with your man friends too, and your sons. Yes. It's interesting because you're right. They're all different, but there is some thread that you'll, you'll hear. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, I guess that'll be it for this episode of the things we know. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram for all the extra little tidbits that we share each week. And we will be back next week with Noyland Mendoza. Bye. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Bye.